Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is trading. This is the week in charts. That's what it is. I'm just want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. I know how crazy it's been lately. So what are we talk about? Well, obviously current market conditions. I'll have a lot to say about that. Where I'm finding some opportunities. IPOs are really good right now. Some uh, longer term trend following stuff working out okay. You want to talk about that too. And that's what a real money is, by the way. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, hang, hold on to your stock picks until we get to the live charts. And if you have any crypto picks, we can look at that too. So, what we going to talk about, what are we going to focus on? Well, I want to continue the, the trading stuff thing. And like I've been saying lately, I would really, really, really cognizant of what I've been doing so I could share more and more of that with you and becoming more and more open and one of the things i've been doing a lot of lately is trading crypto and specifically or especially i should say the altcoins or as most traders that i know call them shit coins <laughs> s-h-y-t and one thing that sort of came up last minute when i was doing my stock chart show where i talked a little bit about crypto is would you rather pontificate or profit? And before I was really, really heavily into the altcoins, I did do a little crypto trading over the years. And I often show the Bitcoin chart where someone who is a known investor, so to speak, in his newsletter, poo pooed Bitcoin from $4,000 all the way up to $60,000. And the bottom line is, you could pontificate and you're going to be right one day. All this stuff will come crashing down. But in the meantime, you can make a lot of money. And I have a lot more to say about that. Bubbles are a trader's best friend. They really, really are. You just have to embrace them. You have to not care. You have to be a little flippant about them. And get on, get off, get your peace, and move on. And I'll talk a lot about that. And just a second before we do all that, there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as often sum it up. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Along the lines of the, the trading stuff, I've been talking about this obviously for a few months now. And when people say, What exactly do you do? The easiest way to explain it, I used to go through a long explanation. And now the easiest way to explain it is just to say, I buy things that go up and sell things that go down. And to some extent, you could pretty much just do that in IPOs. In general, you do that in stocks in general, but you do want to make sure you have a setup. You want to make sure you have a setup in IPOs too, but IPOs work a little bit better with, with breakouts than stocks in general. And right now, crypto, I'm pretty much just buying stuff that goes up, and I'll show you a lot of that in just one second. Now, one thing I want to point out, because I know a lot of people are going to poo-poo it, but the bottom line is it's not about the crypto. It's about going where the money is now and forever. And I did a show a few weeks back for stock charts, and I showed where the NASDAQ went up 400% and Warren Buffett's fund went down 50% while the NASDAQ was going up 400%. Now, NASDAQ came down 77%. All good things must come to an end, unfortunately. But the reason I'm so crypto crazy lately, other than it's a great place to make a lot of money with a lot of caveats, believe me, is it's just a bubble. And I think it's important that we as traders recognize bubbles and, and not confuse the issue with facts very much. Now, buy a beware. And, you know, don't blame me if things go horribly wrong. <laughs> I told a story in, in, crypt, in Coffee and Crypto last Saturday, or as we call it now, Shook on Saturday. And uh, as I've been saying, I don't know if I'm going to do that every weekend, but if I'm in here on Saturday mornings, which I am, and time allows, I might throw out a little video each week on what I'm seeing in the live charts in crypto. So if you're in a Facebook group, that's where I post it. If you're not in a Facebook group, you have to be a member of DaveLander.com. You have to be a paying member, I should say. That he keeps the riffraff out. I'm half kidding. <laughs> the uh, little goat man here, as I told the story last week and, and once uh, earlier this week in the stock chart show, 
let me just see if I could, it's long story endless. Uh, I had an acquaintance many, many years ago. I told him I was a CTA and I, I haven't been a CTA in probably 10, 15 years. But way back in the day, I was for a long time, for maybe 14 years or so. Anyway, he said, oh, yeah, some uh, some guy cold called me once and told me that sugar was going up and I should buy some. And I gave him $5,000 and he bought some. And I don't know what, what else he, he he bought, but I know there was a bull market in sugar when this happened. And he made $200,000 and he bragged to all his friends and all his friends went in and got fleeced. And he said, you know, I feel like the, the Judas goat. The Judas goat is the goat that goes into the barn first, the slaughterhouse more specifically. And then walks out the other side unscathed and probably has a little treat on the other side waiting for him. And all the goats get slaughtered. And I never heard about that. I never heard that term until then. So don't let me be the Judas goat. If you're comfortable do it, doing this, do it. If not, don't. And you can you can do this in a very small manner, as I've said quite a few times. Uh, long story endless. I sold a brewery I had for two thousand dollars, and that funded my crypto account. And before I discovered the shit coins, when everything kind of just died out and there wasn't much to do, I think I was trading Ethereum, Litecoin, um, not Doge, but a couple of those other ones, smaller ones, but not a whole lot of. Uh, pairs, so to speak, or currencies. Ha <laughs> I use that word loosely. Anyway, I um, when things got kind of dead there, I started taking Bitcoins out and buying hard silver. I just thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to do. And I keep thinking I'm going to go back in and, and, and look at those transactions. And I know a while back, I looked at a couple of them and had I just kept the Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin at $60,000 would be worth an S ton of money. I don't know why I just said S ton, been saying shit coins all night. Anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is I started with a very small amount and I took a lot out. And I did I did add back in about, I guess it was fifteen hundred dollars. And and one day I'm gonna add it all up and see how I do. And I'll make that public. If I blow up, I blow up. If I don't which I hope I won't. I don't think I will unless the whole market comes unglued or whatever and I'm not stopped out. I guess the bigger concern would be if some of these exchanges go belly up like one did a few years back. And a, a friend of mine got caught in that debacle. Luckily, he had about four exchanges and, and it, it, you know, he told me, he said he probably would have sold the Bitcoin. He had a Bitcoin there. He probably would have sold it. And he says, it's kind of like four savings. And if, if things work out, he's gonna get 10%. <laughs> of his Bitcoin back and that's gonna be worth about $6,000. It was only worth about 600 back in the day. So kind of a kind of an interesting story. I wanna see how that's gonna shake out. But anyway, buyer beware, right? Now keep in mind that all bubbles are dangerous and you guys have been around for a while. You know that there are, let's say the NASDAQ bubble, for instance, there were some companies that were completely bogus during the NASDAQ bubble. They went up a lot and with proper money management, even in the ones that were bogus, you probably could have done okay. I I started reading Devil Take the Hindmost and some of it is very fascinating and some of it could be quite boring. And when I get the boring part, I put it down and read six other books in the meantime. And then one day I, I, I plan on getting around to finishing it. But Devil Take the Hindmost, good book, it's a book about bubbles and some of it is just absolutely fascinating and it could be boring in between a lot of a lot of history in between that's not very exciting but one of the things that i took away from it and i'm only again about halfway through but they talk a lot about the south sea bubble and i know some of you guys you're probably old enough to remember that <laughs> that was a joke <laughs> reminds me i was I was with Emilio Tomasini, and this was, uh, I, he's really a funny guy, but at the time, I, I, I thought he was a little dry. I just kind of getting to know him or whatever, and he, and he, he didn't joke much, but now that I know him, he's hilarious. <laughs> but we were coming back from a webinar, webinar, it's been so long with this COVID thing, coming back from a seminar after two days in, in Italy, uh, driving through Italy, I should say, back to his house, and uh he says, yeah, the wife, uh, she likes it. Uh, we, She has the, the nanny come and take care of the kids. And uh, she can spend a couple of days with her boyfriend while I'm busy with you doing these seminars. And uh, he's just driving down the road. And 
I kind of looked at him sideways because it was the first time I heard him make a joke. And he goes, that was a joke. <laughs> so anyway, in case you ever hear me say, that was a joke, you know where it comes from. My wife actually uses that too. Now, uh, all kidding aside, a few weeks back, I talked about mining crypto and, and I tend to be, my wife calls me hobby boy. And I've got all kinds of projects. I did some welding last weekend. I've got some welding to do this weekend. I'm building the mother of all desk from my office. It's been a bit of a disaster, but hopefully it'll, it'll turn out okay. And I'm always into something and the garage is a mess and everything's a mess. And uh, anyway, she calls me hobby boy because I'm always into everything. And of course I looked into mining crypto and it looks like in order to do it, uh, provided you have the space and can cool the space and you have good electricity, I mean, there's a lot of ifs, right? That's the point I was getting to. Provided that you have a decent electricity rate, it looks like you have to be at least below 10%. It seems like electricity just keeps going up. You could actually mine crypto, but it looks like you'd have to put about $10,000 into a rig. And what if something happened to that rig? And, and it would probably pay for itself over a year's time, but a lot of stuff can happen between now and then, and you could make a lot of money in one day. You could make a lot, it's funny, I was I was doing my, last week at Bandcamp, right? I was doing my trading simplified show for stock charts yesterday. And I looked at one of the crypto trades I saw and I realized I hit the profit target in three minutes. So that kind of exemplifies the point I'm trying to make. It's like, well, you can kind of get into this mining thing and I think it'd be a lot of fun and I'm kind of nerdy and, and uh, I, I keep resisting the temptation to get into it. But I think that as traders, especially as traders who understand money management, and let me just backtrack a little bit. One reason that I'm excited about crypto is the trend following moron stuff works really, really well. The taking partial profit stuff works really well and the trailing the stop higher works really, really well because it's an inefficient market. And it's an emotional market. And, and as I'll beat the dead horse on in a few minutes, it's it's um, being emotional and rational, it makes for a great market to trade. And this morning I woke up thinking, I'm gonna talk a lot about trading traders, not markets. And then you know the market's gotten away and everything else got in the way today. But the bottom line is when you think about the crypto or anything for that matter, you're trading traders, not markets. And for instance, with the IPOs. The reason we're buying that new closing high is because at a new closing high, everyone who bought the IPO prior to you is profitable and anyone who didn't buy it feels like they're missing the boat. So we're, we're counting on those greater fools to come in. And I really think there's gonna be an S ton of greater fools coming into crypto because there's a lot of people that, that don't even know what it is. And I was gonna say, a lot of people don't understand it. It's like, I don't understand it, right? You don't have to understand it. So one thing I thought of, in addition to the free rolling, which I wanna talk a little bit about tonight, but if you look at some of these miners and you know some of them make like $20 a day and everybody's all excited about that. And, oh man, this miner makes $20 a day and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, what if I, I did the free rolling and hopefully make a lot more money than 20 bucks? on a trade, but I also, every time I hit the initial profit target, just take $50 off and pull it aside. Well, Dave, you're becoming buying hope. Well, I guess to some extent I am, but it's only 50 bucks on the trade. So if I put $1,000 up to do the trade, okay, and or buy $1,000 worth one of these chick coins, right? And I'm looking for right now, for the most part, now in some of them, I'm, I'm starting to adjust for volatility. But like I've been saying lately, just because it's not enough time, not enough time today, I just get my calculator out, multiply whatever price I buy it at times 1.2. And that's my initial profit target. And then I just kind of eyeball the stop. And on a lot of these breakouts, I'm putting my stop in really tight on that second loaf and then obviously bringing it up to break even. I'm going to walk you through two or three of them in just a minute. But again, part of the mining in addition to the trading and hopefully hitting a few home runs, which knock a wood, I have, I can do this peel off thing where I'm peeling off 50 bucks here and there. 
Now, initially, when I started doing this, I wasn't really, I, I didn't really think it would turn into real money, but it's like doing it for a couple of weeks, the the peeling off the 50 bucks every time it hits a, an IPT is now up to like $2,000 in this, by peeling off these, these shares, by mining them, so to speak. Now, again, the other thing I want to point out is, you know, you're probably not too impressed because I'm talking about small accounts and small account size. Well, my goal is to kind of have fun with this and to see if, see what I can parlay it into. And again, I started with, and I got to do all the math, but I've like started with 2K. I took some out, okay? And then I put 1500 back in. So I need to see how that all, how the math all works out. But believe me, it's worth a hell of a lot more now than, than what I started with. But, you know, check back often. But you can see here, and notice the ones down here are right around 50 bucks. And some of those I, I mined, so to speak, today. That's why they're 50. And I think the XHV came off today. Some of them are less than 50 because they went down in price, okay? But my thinking is if I could kind of close my eyes with this, and it's only 50 bucks, right? in these little pairs a lot of the the miners out there the way they make their real money is after i learned a little bit about it about it watching some youtubes is the ones that don't need to survive off their mining income they they just sort of let the coins they mine collect and their thinking is one or two or several of them will hit and this one up here, and I don't know exactly how many 50s I put in it. I think just I think there was only $100 that went in it. Now keep in mind that's profit. And I mean I should have walked you through the trade first, but I'll walk you through a trade in a second. But I know in that one I got stopped out of the second half, okay, after a free rolling for a while, and I went back in, hit the initial profit target, and went back in and then back in the security or whatever you want to call these things, the shit going. And I'm trailing a stop higher. So I think I have at least $100 in this one. But as you can see, it's worth a hell of a lot more than $100. Now, some of these will go to zero. But my thinking is, let me see how much I can mine. It's kind of a game. Okay. And I know I'm doing a little buy and hope. And, and believe me, I'm, I'm afraid the trader in me wants this or if this gets to some substantial, some substantial amount then I might be inclined to apply a little market timing to it. But right now it's just kind of a little fun game to see if I could mine without hooking up some noisy machines and, and have my electricity bill skyrocket and then having, having them go down and then there's a risk of fire and all kinds of other things. So here's the KDA. So you can see it's pretty much going straight up. I did get knocked out of it. And probably just because it was, it was beginning to implode a little bit, I went ahead and just got out of it. And then I got back in, probably bought two or three other ones in the process while it was was this uh, I hate to say it, this orange, this red candle <laughs> on the way down. So a lot of this is probably appreciation. I'm pretty sure that I did have two trades that went into this one. It's kind of hard to track when they don't show you when you're when you're taking uh, in and out, or at least I haven't figured it out just yet. So anyway, that's sort of my version of mining, so to speak. And I got to thinking about it. If you could mine four of these things a day at 50 bucks each, as you'll see in one minute, you'll do really well. And I almost put, when I was putting my slide together this morning, I almost put day ain't over yet. And then I said, you know what? Well, I heard a little ding in the background and I hit another one. So that's 250. Now. Not every day is this good, but I came in today saying, you know, if I just mine one or two today, so to speak, I'll be happy. And keep in mind, now some of these have stopped out, but keep in mind that I still have the chance of a home run on the remainder of the position. And I'll show you my free rolling list in just one second. But I'm a big fan of the fuzzy math, annualizing things. So if I can pull 250, a day mining and this is just pulling off that 50 bucks right not not going for the home run but letting that remainder of the position hopefully i know you said hope but hopefully turn into a home run pulling off 50 bucks sticking it in this separate account 
that's 91,250 a year. Yeah, some of these will go to zero, but some of them might quadruple or go up 10,000% or whatever. We'll see. We'll see. This is going to be a fun live experiment. I'll, I'll share as much as possible with you. The other thing, and I just started experimenting with this, is you can stake coins. And I did a little Googling, Googling on that. I don't fully understand it, but I think Bitcoin is proof of work. So it's they have to make all these calculations to figure out if the transactions are correct or whatever. And that's a proof of work. And it's a very long, long process. But with staking, there's a way to kind of, I guess you're taking like a picture of it and you just have to look at the picture or you're, you're helping them to figure out if the transactions are legit. And again, I'm going to get in trouble because I don't fully understand this, but my thinking is the coins that I can stake, and in some cases you could lend them out too, and I'm not sure how that's going to work just yet, but it, but at 50, if you only have $50 of the coin, you might not be able to stake it. You might need to have it build up a little bit. Like I need to look at that KDA or whatever and see if that could be lent out or staked, so to speak. And basically what you're doing in, in that case is you're able to get a return on your investment while it's just sitting there. Now, you don't want to be like the guy who, and I had a neighbor, used to drive me nuts. I know, it's short trip, save the joke. But he's like, oh, I'm in this stock. It's got a 30% dividend. It's like, well, you know, it's going to go down to zero. There's a reason it has a 30% dividend but i'm experimenting with this and, and i just want to see what's going to happen and so far it's been an absolute blast now i'm not trading for excitement believe me i'm following rules and i'm doing the prettier girl swapping or hot potato swapping or whatever you want to call it where i'm getting in the best looking pair and then i'm flipping it out when it starts to fail to perform or if something looks even better there's a lot of dangers in that, of course. My my wrists are freaking killing me. I had, had uh, cortisone shots a couple of weeks ago. They did absolutely nothing, and the 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 shit coins are adding to killing my wrists. So I'm hoping to make my million so I could uh, have somebody else do my typing or whatever, or trading, or or just walk away when the bubble ends, right? Anyway, let's take a look at the free rolling and mining. So R and this was one of them, and when you're playing a relative strength game, again, I'm just sorting by relative strength and buying the strongest ones, the ones that are going up. And I'm looking to flip them out at 20% for 20% profit. And you can see my stop was down here, my initial stop. And that's a little wide. Usually I'm a little tired of that because if they're going, they should just go. And then I flipped out half right here. And then the stop goes up to break even. So now I'm free rolling on this one and i'll show you my whole list of free rolling in just one second now this is one i think i may have i might have stopped out of this one already yeah i stopped out of this one ideally by the way this this rs trading is is fun okay and, and i probably bought this one if i went back and looked at my records on this bar here because it was going straight up but ideally i like to see like a pullback something that looks more like the core methodology down to the 30 EMA, or in this case, it didn't quite make it there, and then look for a rally out. I still want to do the core methodology stuff, but while the market is hot, I'm trading just a, just a relative strength, or mostly relative strength, and I'll show you that in one second. So those were the actual trades, and you can see the timestamps on them. I bought it here. My stop was right here. I flipped it out. How, how long did that take? See, this one took... This one took three hours, but you know what? Three hours. <laughs> I mean, if even if it takes three days, who cares if you get the IPT, right? And so stops at break even, but then I stopped out of the remainder. So I only made about a hundred bucks on the entire trade, and I put 50 bucks into my mind account, so to speak. Staked it or whatever the case may be. I don't know if this is a, a proof of stake or proof of work coin. But $50 came up. Now you could argue, Dave, you put half your profits. You know, it's like, well, it was only 100 bucks, but if I could get at least that 50 to stake it and then hopefully have that second half turn into something real. And I had, and, and again, I, I, I need to look at all the trades to see what it was, but like that crazy sheep run a while back, that 
I think it had like a thousand dollars in it and it went to like three or four thousand overnight. And that was a lot of fun. And that's where the real money is, believe me. So I think this was the one that that hit the IPT. No, 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 this isn't the one. But anyway, this one hit the IPT earlier today. Stop was here, just bought, bought it because it's going up, right? Flipped it out 20% higher and then trailed that stop higher. We'll get to the live charts in one minute and we'll see which ones are still left. This was the one, yeah, this one hits right before I went live with the show. Stop was here, I just bought it because it was going up, right? Flipped out half, and then now the stop is at break even, and we're free rolling on that one. So here's my free rolling list as of today, 5.03, I'm on Central Time, it's 6.25 now. This was at 5.03. Cyan means I'm free rolling, okay? Purple means it's a new position. I have an IPT in place, 20% higher for now on most of them. And I think on this KSM, I'm only looking for 10%. And there's some other reasons on that, but this one's probably not gonna move as much as some of these, you know, shittier shit coins, right? But purple again, IPT and stop is in place. So we'll see how these shake out. These are free rolling, okay? And then the ones down here, if they're in pink, they're in other accounts. I have most of my coins in one account right now, which is a little scary, by the way. Pink means I need to take some action, raise a stop, or do something to it. Or it's an, it might be, in some cases, it might be a brand new position. Like this one here stopped out. I think it stopped out on half and then I put a stop in the remainder. So I need to watch that. So this KCS, although I do have KCS mined, so so to speak, somewhere, this KCS didn't um didn't hit the IPT. I still have a half position on. I went to exit it and it had bounced above where the stop was. So I put a stop back in place. But anyway, pink means there's something else going on. But cyan's my free rolling list, and then the purple again is the ones with the IPT and the stop in place. Now, I don't want to go through all these, but I just want to put this slide up. So if you want to hit pause, if you're watching the recording on this, by the way, if you are getting anything on this video, you join this video, please like it. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel. Easy for me to say, Dave. Uh, www.youtube.com slash C slash Dave Landry. And if you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. <laughs> I'm half kidding. Anyway, just a just a few things. Um, it could be an obsession, you know, and I'm trying to manage it. And I'm human like everybody else, you know. It's like um, when when I got into this trading thing, I just thought there were some superhuman people out there. And after I got to meet some very famous traders, I realized that they're just regular guys and gals, and and they have ups and downs and and. Uh, one lady, the first time I met her, she dropped an F-bomb. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, you know, you really do trade, you know. <laughs> so, But uh, there's no, there's not a whole lot of regulation, which I'm kind of a libertarian when it comes to markets. Like, leave them alone. Let's just see what happens. You know, it, it by, the, by the way, is it just me or it's, remember you used to get caught in a trading halt? You're like, yeah, you know, you want to do a little dance and all. Let's see if I can go. You know, you're all excited. But now it seems like they open the stock up and it just immediately drops five points on you. So I don't know. I'm not a big fan of regulations, but you know, maybe a little bit is needed. I don't know. Um, it, it, as I alluded to earlier, I mean, I said I wasn't going to go through all this, but just a couple of things I want to touch upon. I think it's going to become harder as the money becomes real. As I've been saying lately, believe it or not, I do go to the gym every day or every weekday. And then on the weekends, I try to bike 20 miles or walk five or 10 miles. But anyway, um, right, I was, on a, I was in a deadline to leave the house to go. I work out with a couple of buddies. He's got a makeshift gym in his uh, bonus room or whatever they call it nowadays. And I proceeded to lose about $500 on one because I, I did something kind of stupid and then I chased it and before you knew it I couldn't believe it I had lost 500 bucks and, you know 500 bucks is real I mean well let me do the let me do the math on that 500 used to be easy when the when it was just uh 250 now it's 365 I hadn't got that math in my head yet so 365 and, and again like I said earlier I tend to annualize yeah so that's so if I lose 500 dollars every day it's 182 thousand dollars a year <laughs> 
So you don't want to do that. But again, it can uh, it can consume you a little bit. I've, I've been talking a lot with uh, John Z. He's our here's a uh, altcoin trader in the group, and uh, it seems like we both have that problem of spending too much time around the screens. But it can go to your head. And the other thing too is the the prettier girl swapping. One thing I'm noticing from that, even though I got five IPTs today and free roll on five, and I think I may have gotten stopped out of one or two of them since, but I was able to bank, so to speak, or stake, so to speak, that 250 bucks. Plus, we'll see what happens on the remainder. It's like I, I, I did find myself right before we went live as I was looking through the charts, kick myself because I was in some of these pairs earlier today but they started to tail off. So I got out and flipped them into something else. It's almost, it's like kind of, I'm not wishing for this, but it would almost be a little bit easier if the market settled down and I would just play my core methodology setups. It's it's funny, the the on my trading station, which you can't see over my left shoulder, I have a list of the stocks that I'm in that are in the trading service. And that's the, I'm not going to say most relaxing because I still drop F-bombs, but that's the, that's the easiest part of my portfolio to manage because it's, it's a setup where I know the entry, I have the plan laid out, I know the stop, I know the initial profit target, and then I just have to do a couple of adjustments here and there. But it might be days sometimes before I take any action on that i just let it do its thing and and you know to my surprise by being a little hands off some of these things as i pointed out in recent presentations we've been in for a year and a half 400 something days on some of them and we, we got into some last summer we're still in and that's just a wonderful thing and it's like a, it's almost like i'm kind of looking forward to being able to back off a little bit and just trade those pullbacks but right now it's it's going so crazy I feel like we got to make hay while the sun shines, and I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna come to an end. It has to, right? But in the meantime, I think it's fantastic. And again, don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Don't do anything you don't understand. Believe me, I don't understand it <laughs> either, right? But it is a bubble, and it is something that's that's worth looking into. I think, okay. Crazy inefficient. I mean, that's that's cheap coin. You know, we had to wait. How long do we have to wait in CPE? Ah, thought, thought I would do a presentation. I mentioned CPE, huh? We had to wait about six months for one of our stocks to go up 500%. Well, sheep went up 500%, what, in a day, overnight? You know, so it can happen. I talked to a friend of mine, and um, he kind of dabbled in a little trading here and there. And uh, he bought like uh, $500 worth of Doge and it went up to like, I forget what he told me, but it was something like five or $10,000. And he cashed out and paid off some credit cards or bills or whatever. And and then uh, he just kept a little, he put a little bit of money into Ethereum and he's just gonna hang on to that. And he's he's backed off. He's not crazy in and out of it. He's gonna he's gonna visit in a few weeks though. And he does wanna see, he does wanna see what, he wants, he wants to see the sausage being made. So. That'll be interested. Uh, they're super volatile, which can be a good thing, right? So it's like uh, being able to hit five profit targets in one day is 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 unheard of, right? It's amazing, you know. Uh, it's not tangible. It's hard to understand or justify. So it's 100% emotional. And remember, you're trading traders, not markets. I can see, and I don't want to confuse the issue with facts, but I can see where a few coins are beginning to emerge as something that might be might actually have a purpose or something and and i'm trying not to confuse the issue with facts but some of them might trade some of them might trade more like um like a big cap growth stock eventually and and that's okay and that might be a little cleaner type of trading for certain types of pullbacks and things like that but the bottom line is it's a 100% emotional market and you're trading traders, not markets. And you got to remember that. And like I said last week, I think old guys rule. Well, young, young guys rule because they're embracing it. 
and they're taking that ball and running with it. And I'm hearing all these stories about all these kids making all this money, but what they're not telling you is they're subsequently blowing up on that money. My friend's son, because you know, every day in between sets, I'm, uh, I got my, my phone out and looking at shit coins, right? And uh, my, my friend's son, one of his friends just made like $10,000 and something. And, you know, I'd like to check back a few in a few weeks to see how much of that $10,000 he has left. What I'm doing is I'm not betting the form. I'm just chipping away at it, chipping away at it, chipping away at it. As I just showed you, trying to establish those positions to free roll. But, you know, again, it's not about the crypto. It's about trading emotional markets. And the NASDAQ, for those of you who were here in 99, was just absolutely nuts. So, and believe me, a lot of people were poo poo in that rally. I'm going to go, I, you know, it's like, hey, Dave, why you beat the dead horse? Well, no matter how many times I say something, I still get a boatload of questions on it. So, I just want to show this slide. If you Google 220 EMA breakout, you can find this on the internet. And I'm using a 30 day EMA just because that's my favorite EMA lately. I know you want to party with me, right? But really simple system. You can take a snapshot of this slide, look for two lows above the moving average, enter above the high, plus a little wiggle room. Now I've got 10 ticks in here because this was the Japanese yen, which it was originally programmed for, or, or I did the research on. But you would probably want to give it a little bit different wiggle room in other markets. So let me just go through this real quick. I know I've done it a thousand times, but at least I'll have it in this video. So when I get asked this week, I can say, go in and watch the week of charts. And then hopefully they'll take the time to go in and go a little further back. So two bars of Landry light. If you have the, if you have stock charts, ACP, all you have to do is like this video and then that'll give you access to the plugin. And there's other ways of doing it. If you don't, you don't necessarily need this, but it does kind of make your life uh, easier if you're playing around with the Landry light, which just means a low is greater than the moving average. Now I'm using the S and P's, the spiders for this. Spiders are probably not the best market to try to implement this system because they're very efficient. Everything works better with trend is what I'm what I've been preaching lately. And I think this is a really simple system. If you're new to trading and you just want to put a couple thousand dollars in or even a thousand dollars or even five hundred dollars in an experiment, I think this system would be as good as any and you're just entering about that two bar high plus a little wiggle room so in a case like this maybe the entry would have been here or maybe somewhere to the top of this bar and as a general rule maybe stop out at 30 ema i don't do things mechanically but this would be a good little somewhat mechanical way to kind of approach a bubble type of market and I think if you had a lot of time, especially if you're a younger guy, I'd be willing to bet you can watch 15 minute bar charts and I bet this thing would really work well. And if anybody tries it and can make it work, let me know. I mean, I'm I'm not, you know, shoot me if I get <laughs> if I get down to that level, but um I do think it would work and I do think it would be it would be pretty tough. And, you know, it's like I need to watch. I mean, I spend hours and hours on screen today. OK, yeah, we'll get to that in one second. Let me just let me just go to my list real quick and show you a couple things. So, again, here's the list I just showed you. Is this dash not doing what? No, it's OK. So these are ones, and this was a prior trade here, probably stopped out, may have gotten the IPT, but I'm back in this one. Sort of a pullback and also high in relative strength. The combination of those two, this is not a perfect setup, but the combination of those two are one of my favorites. Yeah, keep the questions coming and I'll, I will walk through the charts. Uh, you know, by the way, so if you're interested, like here's the, here's your, your, your 230 EMA, okay? Bar one, bar two, enter above this high, plus a little wiggle room. So your entry would have been right there. Let's say your stops at the 30 EMA. Boy, that would have been a great little trade, huh? I mean, you're definitely at the IPT plus a little bit, about a 50% run so far. So this is my long list. Most of these I bought just because they were going up. This one was a pullback, and then when I bought it, it was having a pretty decent rally. It's probably bought at the top of this candle here. And I say candle. But the, be the best of both worlds is when you have a pullback and uh, you have the stock, the stock, the, the shit going high on 
the list. This is kind of more of a generic pullback, you can see. And it's not a perfect setup, but I liked it because it was it had a big rally here. It's already come back in, so I'm already losing a little bit. So I do want to show you or tell you that I do occasionally lose money in this stuff. It, it, I'll lose money in four or five of these things, but then you hit four or five, and it makes it all worthwhile. In fact, we got one. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen of these are free rolling. Now, one thing that I haven't fully figured out is like in a case like this, when it's up around 380, now I might've been sleeping at this point in time and I'm resisting the temptation to bring a laptop in the house, but I could see me doing it at some point. <laughs> but one thing that I might, I might need to think about is maybe scaling out a little bit when they make this ridiculous additional 50% move overnight. Uh, brokerages, um, there is Kraken, which I love their trader interface. I'm kind of aggravated with them because a lot of times you can't get, seems like you have a hard time getting trades off, especially if you do a whole bunch of trades. Uh, Coinbase would be one of the, and I'm using this term loosely, but I think Coinbase would be one of the safer ones and a good place to start. Make sure you're using pro Coinbase though, because you're going to get raped in fees with the regular old Coinbase, okay? Pro Coinbase is a good one. The only problem with Coinbase is they don't have a whole lot of pairs. Gemini is okay, they don't have a whole lot of pairs. KuCoin is one that I really like. It's foreign based though, and that's a little bit scary. So don't be, you know, tread lightly there. Like I said in the last presentation that I did, uh, Shitcoin Saturday, uh, one of my friends who lost the money in the, in the Mount Gox debacle, was like, you have that in KuCoin? I'm like, really? You know, he kind of got me a little nervous. But again, on a lot of these, it was just kind of going straight up. This one I kind of liked because it had pulled back a little bit and then started shooting up again. And oh, this is the one, this is KDA. We talked about this earlier. I got it in this one way back here. And then uh, you can see that that's an old stop at five bucks. That's when it was... Uh, that's, what I, that's how long I've been in it. And I got shaken out in this little move lower. And I gotta be careful not to chase my own tail, but because but sometimes I see these things beginning to implode and I get out of the way and then I look to get back in. Uh, it's not behavior I would recommend because because one thing I talked about in recent shows is that there is a potential for a lot of bad behavior to happen. I think that if you're new to trading, you just wanna learn how to trade and get the reps in, and risk maybe $20 a trade or something very small like that. I think it's a good place to learn. It's a good place to, to follow a little bit of system and learn a little discretion. But you can get into a lot of trouble real fast. Like I just said, it's like, oh, I'm starting to get out of the way when they drop. But there's so many other ones that are hot. So I can get out of one of these and go get into another one. But obviously, had I not gotten back in, I would be very upset that I missed that move. And so I try to leave the ones that are free rolling alone, so to speak. And just trail that stop higher. Here's another case where I probably need to start scaling out of a little bit when they're super high like this. I mean, that's a, that's a lot to give up, right? But then again, sometimes you hang on and you see what happens. Look, it tails higher. And then look at this one. Look at this tree. It's huge. It's, it's going right back up. In fact, I'm yeah, I'm free rolling on that and it's doing pretty good. Yeah, this is okay. This is kind of exciting for me. So on this one here, I had a thousand dollars in it, and that's all, right? So again, don't bet the form. And I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose anything, but I really don't want to lose much more than a hundred bucks on these things going in. And so I had a thousand dollars in, took five hundred dollars off the table, plus a hundred dollar profit. Okay. So now technically only have $400 left in this, right? And it's now worth $944, okay? So that's pretty good. So that's another, what's that, uh, $546 in profits. So that's pretty good. And, you know, it's it adds up. You do this every day, plus you do the stock stuff, plus you do the IPO stuff. It's just another, another venue. Remember a while back I went on this profit center kick? Well, this is my profit center, and I was doing a lot of ETF trading, and now it's kind of like I backed off on the ETF trading, 
And I'm, I'm the, my intraday trading is mostly like the ogres. And that's something I really want to show you tonight. But there's just not enough time. I wanted to, to, to get all this Bitcoin in. Like uh, Tesla was one. And uh, it didn't work out. But I was able to squeeze off a little bit on that. If we get a chance. We'll take a look at that. But anyway, these are the ones I'm free rolling on. Let me get to your questions. So this looks kind of interesting. Look, I'm free rolling on this one. But let's say I was just coming in here and I'm just seeing this one, okay? I would take this trade, maybe enter about 50 or so, stop yourself out about 46. And then, oh, I don't know, whatever the IPT, uh, maybe 20% on this one, you might have to adjust to the volatility. This one isn't quite as crazy as some of the other ones. But look at this nice little TKO move down into the 30 EMA. And again, I'm free rolling. I'm going to try to hold on as long as I can on this one. It's kind of a game, right? It's just it's just absolutely fun. Little TKO on this one. And so far, I've survived this little correction. But this is a nice little TKO. I mean, ideally, like if this was a stock, I'd want a much deeper correction. But with these shit coins, sometimes you won't get that. So maybe if you're following core methodology, you know, you're entering at 37, flipping out at like 41 or 42, and then getting that stop to break even. Hopefully. I know I shouldn't say that. FTM, I've been in this one absolutely forever. You can see a little Landry light pullback back here. Look at this pullback back here. This might have been the one I got in on. This is textbook, guys. Look at this. Nice Landry light, nice little pullback. Nice run higher. Of course, it knocks you out on this, but so what? It begins to take off again. For those keeping score, bar one, bar two, enter above this high, 30 EMA right there. Okay. I mean, uh, 30 EMA, 230 EMA breakout would have, would have got you along here. Breakouts work in inefficient markets. Breakouts don't work in efficient markets. Breakouts are working really well right now in IPOs. I don't want to make it look like I've ventured too far for the core methodology. Core methodology is still the bread and butter. But if I can make a little money on the side, especially because it's found money, and like I said, I, so to speak, I sold the brewery, I got $2,000 back. You know, well, that was a great investment, you know, $10,000, $12,000, and I get $2,000 back. You know, <laughs> yeah, but I enjoyed the beer. Now I've got to try to lose the weight. Turns out homebrew is very fattening. <laughs> Who knew? All right, let's uh, let's get to the questions. Do you still risk one or two percent on a small account? Well, that's where it gets a little tougher, uh, George, because it's hard to get. As I've said before, it's hard to get your money management right. Um, I'm probably risking more than two percent, but let's see. What did I say? I don't lose more than a hundred. Now the account's gotten a little bigger. Yeah, I'm not. I'm probably only risking maybe a half a percent now on these things. But if your account's really, really small, it's kind of hard to get your math right. That money can almost be a little bit of tuition, but be darn careful with it. You don't want to lose anything, right? But if you're only putting into it what you'd spend on a couple of rounds of golf and maybe a couple of nice meals with uh, with your significant other, then you know it's don't. I wouldn't stress too much. John says, I'm almost on, I'm on the last chapter of Devil Take the High Most. Yeah, I kind of I kind of got to a boring segment for a while where they went to they go into so many details, but it's it's definitely worth reading for sure. I see if you're today I mind list only M and G OMG is in Coinbase. Okay, yeah, that's good to know. Coinbase seems to be adding more. I was kind of shocked they had Sheeb, and uh Sheeb was the one that went up 500%. And it was in Coinbase, you know, I, I just wouldn't expect to see it there. So you kind of have to go out, out to some of these fringe brokerages for a lot of these coins, which is scary as all heck. And I think at some point, you know, my buddy I was talking about, I talked about this, I think in coins and uh, crypto and coffee, he was said he was trying to figure out if I could transfer out a hunk of money every night. But I said, you know, I'm so active, it's going to be hard to do that, you know. KCS okay, so yeah, starting to move a little bit. Can we throw some crypto picks out in your stock picking segment? Absolutely. You'd be like right now. Go ahead. And then uh, and then we'll get to the markets and get the stocks in, in one second. So if you want to start asking about stocks and stuff, feel free to do. So Dash, USD 230 off daily above from new high a few days ago. I'm long Dash, I think. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Yeah. Good eye. Good eye, George. Okay. So it, one thing that kind of amazes me at 
and it's it's bound to stop working. I don't want to make it look like it's going to work forever, but it's working now. Okay. And this might not be a perfect example, but I've seen quite a few examples. Like notice here, bar one, bar two, no trigger. Okay. I've seen it do that like three and four and five times in a row, and you would avoid it all that that chop. I'm amazed at how much chop sometimes you would avoid. Yes, occasionally you'll get whack. Cause look, I wanna I don't want to make it look like it always works. Okay, bar one, I don't know if that's daylight or not. There we we'll have to look, lantern light. But let's just say bar one, bar two, you've got long here stopped out. So what? That's a pretty small price to pay, right? So you lose whatever that is, let's just say 20 points. And then now it's up significantly. Hang on. Okay, actually it hasn't triggered yet. So the year tree be way up here, believe it or not. I know it takes a leap of faith. CRO, crypto, okay. Yeah, uh, you put a dollar sign in front of the symbol or just put slash crypto like you're doing, John. That's perfect. All right, take a look at CRO. So let me get this, let me get this sorted out. And I'll take a look at as many as we can. We do have to move on. I didn't intend to spend this much time, but I think it's very important. I think you have to... Um, Make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, I like this one. In fact, this is college fun worthy. <laughs> Please realize that, that was a joke. <laughs> so, but yeah, you've got a TKO here. Enter above this high. That'd be a great place to enter. I don't know where I got in this one. I've been in this one for a while though. But here, look, bar one, bar two, enter above this high plus a wiggle room. Your entry would have been right there. And guess what? This big fat candle. Yes, I said candle. I know these funny looking charts. But I'd be willing to bet I bought this one on an RS play right around there. And then you can see nice little run flip some out. So, yeah, that looks pretty damn good. John, good eye on that. Jazzy. Now, that's one that I staked or tried to stake at least, but I did get the mine, so to speak. I got the 50 bucks out. And I think I scratched out on the remainder. But that one like took off, you know, I came in, that's one of those ones that it, uh, I came in, made a couple of trades like around midnight and the next day came in, I was pleasantly surprised. That doesn't always happen though. Yeah, this one's just kind of pulling back, consolidating. I'd wait for a serious rally or a deeper pullback and play the pullback. But if it starts to have a pretty serious rally, it might be worth going after again. I haven't completely wrapped my head around the new coins versus the old coins, okay? because sometimes it's just new to this exchange, but I've seen some pretty amazing moves. I mean, what's that from, from down here, 10, this is like 100% move, or this is like 300% move, so yeah. But it's not, it's, I wouldn't say it's set up right now, but I mean, if it, if it, if you came in and it was like up here, and it was like number three or four on the RS list, I think it'd be worth a shot. In fact, we'll do that before I forget. Soul USD looking good, setting up. Yeah, Soul is one that I think might be viable longer term. And it's just somebody was telling me about it. Somebody smarter than me was 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 trying to explain it to me and telling me about how it could be viable. And it seems like SOL, not uh, SOUL. It just seems like it's it's it kind of trades like a growth stock, you know. And that's the point I was trying to make earlier. But yeah, that's pretty much set up. Nice little pullback. It'd be, I'd, it'd be great if it pulled back to 30 EMA, but that looks fantastic. Maybe a little bit deeper pullback, but you could probably enter around 250 or so. And, you know, in something like this, I might have to not be as aggressive with my initial profit target. Maybe just a 10% move is all you need in something like this, like 20 20 25 dollar move as opposed to be what what would 20 percent be like a 40 or 50 dollar move might not be and that's where i have it adjusted down to the volatility of pairs right now everything is so damn volatile you know what's the difference between usd and usdt usdt i don't know enough uh to to really pontificate maybe john can jump in if he knows but the usdt is us dollar token and it seems like these exchanges use, or especially something like KuCoin uses the dollar token. So technically you should be able to trade dollars for dollar tokens back and forth, okay? Um, Coinbase has a few, a pro Coinbase, I wanna make sure you're using the right one, has a few USDTs that if you wanna trade them, 
it's like I, I, it just made me nuts because on some of these I, I, on Coinbase before I had all these other brokers, I try to I try to buy them and it wouldn't let me buy them. So you have to change your dollars into USDT, which is a kind of a digital currency, so to speak. But it's always around a dollar. You know, it might be up a little, down a little, but it's always roughly a dollar. And then you can buy the uh, the token. Okay. Yeah, uh, John says USDT is a tether, pain in the ass because you need to exchange dollars for tether. Yeah, it, but so far it hasn't been a, an issue for me, but on Coinbase, like a, some exchanges, you could just buy them and, and, and they figure it all out, okay? I don't think I have any, let me see if I have any cash left over. Let me see how they put it in cash. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, so on like a KuCoin, yeah, so when you sell one of these USDTs, it puts the money into USDT. So then, then you have USDT and you can go in and buy another one. All right, let me just do a quick RS scan here, and then I want to jump into stocks. And again, don't bet the life savings. Don't think I'm going cuckoo, uh, cuckoo for crypto or anything. I mean, let's let's you know check back off. Let's see where I am in a few months. Um, this one, one thing I have noticed is if you see a lot of long tails, it's probably thin, so be careful. I have traded this one a few times. I don't know if it's, I don't know if I was able to pull off some um, mines off of it. I think I have, I think I made a little money on this one, but this one could be a little crazy, but see, it's top of the list. And I like to buy them when they're at the top of the candle, believe it or not. I know it just takes a leap of faith. And oh, by the way, um, as I often say, sometimes your 30 EMA is your best friend in these things, okay? If it's below 30 EMA, leave it alone. And that in and of itself will probably keep you out of trouble. I'll probably just pay for your webinar. There you go. See, this one looks kind of interesting. It looks like it could be a little thin, but this is one I'd buy, okay? I would buy this right now. So somebody make a note of that, or let's just put a, let's just put a, a tick mark in here. And let's see if I can move this a little bit. And when I do the editing of the video, we'll see where we end up. I hope it doesn't confuse me. Come on, there it is. Okay, so let's see where we end up. So I would, you know, again, it looks like it could be a little thin, so I'd be careful, but I would actually buy that one because it's high up in the list. It's at the top of the candle, okay? It's at 45 cents. So let's see where it goes, okay? And then where would I put the stop? Oh, geez, bottom of this candle, maybe, maybe about 42 cents. So 45 cents, you risk three cents on this trade, right? See what happens. Oh, look at that, it's, it's winning already. Look at that trade, it's huge. In fact, let's, you know what, for shits and giggles, let me do this, let me do this, let me go buy some of this. Talk about yourselves, let's see if we can do it quickly. Now, it's a little bit on the thin side, so I'll probably be swapping out of it by the end of the show, but let me just see what would happen. John Z left. He's going to trade some shit coins. Okay. H B A R. All right. And I want to. We're in the spot market. Now I want to put my money where the mouth is. Okay. I think I only have like three hundred dollars available. Let's see. All right. So this will be fun to do. I know you want to part with me. I have three hundred sixty-six dollars left in this account. I just bought it. Okay, and let me tell you where the fill is. Cha-ching, forty-five nine. So let's just say forty-six cents. All right, I didn't want to come in, and I'm going to put put it in pink. So it means after the show, we need to put a stop in an IPT. If anybody's watching and hits, uh, it runs up about twenty percent. Please let me know so I can get out. Anyway, you can you kind of get the idea. Not a whole lot of excitement tonight so far. But I guess the 98 over, right? But again, like that one's probably, that's way too, whatever that is. Ethereum, yeah, that'd just take this one out of my list. So it doesn't muck up things. Anyway, so that's kind of it, that's it. You know, you just you just wanna buy the ones that are going up. They're not going up, don't buy them. How long will it last? I have no idea. This looks good, Dow, you can see it's it's going up, right? And I know, it takes a leap of faith. And be prepared to get stopped out a lot on these things. But then you could also, as I showed you earlier, and you could see that huge list of cyan, 
you could also end up free rolling on a bunch. This looks fantastic. Now, see, I would actually rather be in this than that one I just bought, but I'll I'll ride it out and see what happens. But this is actually more core methodology. This looks this looks good, right? Nice little pullback, nice little knockout, almost to the 30 EMA, trying to rally now. And that's the other thing too, just because of time, I don't have time to sit around these things. I'll just jump in, like, right, just jump in midstream instead of waiting for a more serious trigger. What is that, TRIA? Do I have any money over here? See, and you can see it could be a bit of addiction, right? You know, you gotta be careful. But if you're using stops and taking partial profits, no, see, uh, Coinbase doesn't have it, okay? Maybe Kraken does, but I'm not gonna. Can somebody see if it's on Kraken for me? Oh, no, John left, huh? If it is on Kraken, let's see. What is it? T-R-I-A? T-R-I-A. Now, I don't want you to think I'm always this, if you're new to me, I don't want you to think I'm always uh, this, this active in these markets, you know? Yeah, George brings up a, a good point. Does crypto distract from core? It can, okay? I won stock charts, well, we were working on my stock chart show a while back and I was working with the producers. And one thing I came up was was a list of things that uh, topics that I could cover each week and make it more of a bit of a segmented show. And lately it just hasn't happened, but I'm kind of working towards that. Like I talk a little bit about crypto, a little bit about IPOs and stuff. But one of the things I thought about doing was a, 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 a missed trade of the week, the best trade of the week and the worst trade of the week. And I think that would be a really fun segment to do and i did miss agc which went up like three points maybe because i was looking at crypto maybe because i was distracted by something else so you have to be careful not to let this consume you too much and it can as you can see so anyway i think you get the idea you know you're looking for this the the, the what what's got to be so excited is what works in, in stocks, the core methodology, I'm excited to see that it works in crypto. And I'd be willing to bet the next bubble comes along, whatever that's going to be, it'll work there too. All right. Before I forget, speaking of stocks, oh, by the way, this one looks really good. Look at that nice little pullback, kind of a TK on the pullback, almost to the 30. I don't know if I said it earlier, but that's college fund worthy for sure. All right. Let me shift gears and get back to the, let me get my charts up and running. You're a wild, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm just excited. Okay, the question is, I have a Coinbase account. Do you know whether the funds from Coinbase can be transferred to the Pro account? Yeah, very, 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 very easily. Um, when I'm in, uh, when I have to move money around, I, you can just go in and out. And they don't charge you anything. You can go directly from your Coinbase account to the Pro Coinbase account, and it's uh, it's pretty painless. All right, let's let's hop into the stocks. But yeah, George, to your point, today, for instance, I try to start my IPO analysis at 2.30 every day. And crypto, I was busy working on crypto before you knew it, it was about 2.40, 2.45, before I really got heavily into my IPO analysis. So yeah, you just got to juggle it all. You know, you can figure it out, right? All right, let's take a look at the market. NASDAQ, we're here inside day today, pulling back a little bit recently, no big deal. It could use a pullback. As long as it didn't pull back into this prior base, I'm not going to get too excited, okay? VLN for TKO, yeah, that might be a college fund worthy one. I have to check. I might still be in that one. Uh, S&P 500 pulling back also in here. So far, looking pretty good. Persistency is something I preach a lot. Notice this nice persistent uptrend followed by this little pullback in here. That's looking pretty darn good. Hey, Rusty, what have been saying forever? Bigger the base, bigger the launch into space. And somebody corrected me and said, that's not you, Dave. That's some guy named Ralphie Akapora. But 
I say it too. <laughs> and I think I think that I think the Russell's just getting started, but who cares? I'm just a trend follower. I don't know that for a fact, but it looks pretty damn good. Pretty excited to see that happening. Energies have lost a little steam in here. So far, you're just pulling back. So far, it looked pretty good, but they have lost a little steam as of late financials looking pretty damn good. Just pulling back a little bit. Drugs had tried to work their way higher, pulling back a little bit, still have to clear a little resistance. I wouldn't get too excited about drugs just yet, maybe on an individual issue basis. Take a look at biotechnology, though, kind of all over the place. Hard to get excited about biotechnology at this juncture. Take a look at some of these boring areas like MNC, right? Remember, we've been in, what is it, ARLP? Or what's the, what's the, um, not ARLP, what's the, what's the MNC stock in the portfolio? Somebody in a service. ASO is um, Academy, ARLP. I can't get to my screens. Anyway, there's one we've been in forever that's a, a an MNC stock, and it's it's just chugging along, and it's it's just kind of hard to believe. Sleepy old MNC doing really really well, but in general things look pretty damn good. MNC transports have made it all the way back to brand new highs. I sure like to see them clear these prior highs in here. So far so good, so good. As I often say, I'm more excited about the semiconductors going higher than the transports although if if you have your adders like a little country girl you should would say if you have your adders you can have them both you know um but i do like the semis to confirm what you're seeing especially in the nasdaq and the russell and the semis look pretty damn good and what else i think that's about it for stocks john wants to talk about vln yeah, I like this one. I was long this one, I think, but I like it a lot now. Um, the only reason something like this isn't an official setup in the service today is it is a little on the thin side. So just be careful with that. But, you know, I think you could trade this like a textbook TKO. Enter at 11 and stop at 9, okay? And that's it. And and I think that's I think that looks pretty damn good, John. Good uh, Good eye on that. VLD, I think I might be long that one. Yes, I, if I survived, I don't know if I survived this opening gap reversal yesterday, but that looks pretty good too. Uh, it's a good looking stock. So nice, nice uptrend here. It's pulled back. I think it's, I think it's worth a shot. I probably am long this stock, full disclosure. Good eye there though. LTR, LTRX. Yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that TKO. TKO is huge. Uh, it's a bit of an extreme TKO. It's a little bit thin, but not too, too bad. And I did see this one tonight, and I don't think it made the Landry list. I, I kind of picked it apart after I looked at it, but it's 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 a pretty good looking stock, okay? It is a double top knockout. So I think it's enter above the high, stop below the low type of setup. And if it doesn't trigger, it might just keep imploding. And th in that way, you don't put any capital in harm's way. So that's okay. Looks like it can be a little bit thin. So just be careful with that. Oh, thank you, Mike. We'll say hello. Uh, say hello to Marin, too. I'll tell Marcy hi for you. Okay. Great show. Good night. John is off the trade check coins. Good. Have some fun. Go buy that. Uh, what did we buy earlier? Here or something? You know, you know what they do? I, was like, I have no idea. H bar. <laughs> is it H bar? What is it? H bar. Yeah. You know what they do? I don't know. Who cares? Where's Don F? <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, I can only stand that Tom Fuller for so long. Does crypto, yeah, like you said earlier, George, does it distract, distract from. Uh, the core methodology, yeah, distracts from life, distracts from a lot of things. AMPL. This one looks pretty good. Um, this almost made the lander list tonight. I like that it's an IPO. I like to see a little bit deeper pullback, but I think it's okay as it is. But as I said in tonight's service, sometimes I might look for a little too much perfection, but I think that's okay being super, super, super picky. 
So keep that on your watch list for sure. I have a, if you look, I have a momentum list in here. Let me see if I can find it. And a lot of these stocks like AMPL, as you can see, are on this list. So I have a lot of really good looking stocks. Probably most of the stocks you're gonna ask about tonight will be in this list, I would think. GFS, GFS. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, it could probably use a little deeper pullback. It's got okay volume. It's pretty good looking stock though. Uh, who get John, of course. Yeah, John's our IPO guy in the group in Facebook. Thank you, John. Yeah, maybe a little deeper pullback, but it is an IPO, so it's a little tricky, you know. Um, I think it looks okay. I think it was lower price with a shallow pullback like this. Shallow, I mean, it's pretty deep, I guess, if you, if you calculate it. But yeah, I think, I think it looks okay as a pullback for sure. SM for Stewart, that's going to be a oil field stock, probably St. Mary. Or used to be St. Mary. Uh, a little bit more knockout move, okay? I, I prefer just a little bit more, but it's got a pretty good persistent trend. It's got tons of volume. Let's back the chart out a little bit, see what we got. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, ideally, I like to find something that's not so far extended in the trend, okay? I, with the oil field stocks, I just love them when they're making the transitions, kind of like the CPE did, like way back here. But that that looks pretty good, Stuart. I have to give you credit on that one for sure. A little bit deeper pullback, and then maybe see what else is out there. Okay, there goes the H bar. Come on, baby, you can do it. What do I need? What did I, what did I say I got in it? I got in it at what forty? Let's just say forty six round numbers. Oh, we got a ways to go. Point four six times one point two equals. 55 cents. So maybe we'll hit 55 cents by the end of the show. All right. Uh, MC, does this distract from the core methodology? Yes. Does it distract from the weekend charts? Yes. <laughs> this looks pretty good. I don't like this funky bar in here. This has got me a little concerned, but it's not bad. It's pretty good looking stock. Uh, so you get credit for that one, Stuart. 